is New Day Northwest. Now, here's Margaret Larson. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to New Day. Starting things off as a new podcast that's the brainchild of two Seattle notables. One is a rocker, the other a quiz show champion. Omnibus is a podcast about all the strange but true historical oddities, which makes them a perfect pair to join us for a new round of New Day Hot Topics. Please welcome back John Roderick and Ken Jennings. Yay! See you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. you. Two good brains coming together for good cause. How, how did you two meet? We met at Bumbershoot, right? Really? Yeah, we're both Seattle. We're active in the Seattle mm -hmm. community and of, of, um, of smart, uh, uh, yeah. self-important, self-obsessed <laughs> people. <laughs> okay. He was probably doing some some literary event, and I was there. Doing technical stuff, probably. Some yeah. diagram I brought him some guys... water. And John said... was busking in the Seattle Center, yeah. and uh, yeah, I felt bad for him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you had this idea for a podcast. How? Where did it come from? I'd been trying to talk Ken into doing a podcast for a couple of years, and he was pretty dubious about it uh, because it's still a new medium. Uh, and he well, did... John's an amazing podcaster, and I was not convinced that I was gonna. We're seeing some video of this right now. Yeah, I like that's amazing podcasting. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> There's the bunker. That is high You end, can tell you just looking at that how good the show is. <laughs> yeah. I think. Actually, that's what I love about podcasts is often it looks like you're finally seeing, you know, behind the, the screen right. and we know what it is that you're actually doing. What sorts of things do you talk about? Well, our podcast, the idea is we're assembling this authoritative collection of all human knowledge and experience for whoever succeeds the human race. If something terrible wow, were to that happen, should be easy. If, the, if the media we were to strike today, tops. you know, we're, we're, so we're speaking to the mole people or the robots or whatever of the future <laughs> who do not know about the defenestration of Prague and the Thirty Years' War or about Jennifer Aniston's haircut on Friends. You know, it's, it's all the wow. stuff that they might have forgotten in the, in the apocalypse. You, so for, you forget how influential Jennifer Aniston's hair was. It was, it was the Rachel That's and everybody right. had to have it. Well, Omni suggests that we're covering just pretty much everything, That's right? True. So we let's talk about something that um, just happened on Sunday, the Golden Globes, and Oprah Winfrey spoke and broke television. Everybody just stopped. Um, and so now the discussion is, will she run for president? Which makes me a little bit sad because I think the speech itself deserved a lot of attention and those ideas were so well articulated and I feel like we sort of skipped over that to this other thing. How do you interpret the age we're in where presumably because of President Trump's election, now we have opened the door to the idea that somebody who's a big celebrity could legit run for president with no public sector or government experience. Personally, I think that being president is a job, that being a politician is a job that you spend your whole career training to be. And being a celebrity is a really bad way of preparing to be the president. So, I mean, Oprah Winfrey is in the category of a public pundit. She's wonderful at expressing these big ideas. And, and these that, values, which I thought was really important. And that is its own job. And she's spectacular at it. We shouldn't immediately assume that she would be a great administrator of a federal bureaucracy. That said, if we're going to have a celebrity, you could do worse than Oprah. Yes, yeah. true. The president of the United States and the first Stedman, you know? like. <laughs> 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 like, like we didn't immediately have to jump to the worst celebrity, you know, when we decided yeah. to make celebrities president. I, it's just such an odd thing. Does this happen in other? I mean, you're the the history buff, right? Ha, has anybody ever done this? Sure. Um, who's, Ber Berlusconi uh, That's in, true, Italy. in Italy. Yeah, he just had a media empire and was like, well, I could run Italy too. That went well. Or how about Ava Perone? Just make a bunch of B movies. Oprah's uh, Oprah's movie resume is better than Ava Perone's. Absolutely, much better. Color Purple. Ava Perone never made a Color Purple for sure. All right. Well, so why? And, and certainly, she's better than having a general be the president, which is a which is a typically what you and do. And we've done that a dozen times. Yeah. We've done that. That yeah. used to be the way we elected president. Well, that went pretty well with Eisenhower, didn't it? Uh, it yeah, the exception rather than the rule. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so normally we spin the wheel to go to the next topic, but this is actually Ken's topic, so there, I spun. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> tell us about this story. You picked oh. it and you thought this was important, I and I think it kind of goes with what we're talking about. Well, I just read yesterday that Medieval Times, my favorite restaurant in the world. Do you guys know Medieval Times? Yeah. yeah. Where you eat like it's, uh, you party like it's 15 dollars 99 
you know, it's always uh, overseen by a, a big king who is the king of the banquet or whatever. And now for the first time, the new Medieval Times show launching nationwide is going to have a woman. It's going to have a queen Yay. running the For the first time in 35 years. Running the kingdom of... of Ethiopia or whatever the <laughs> right whatever, whatever the phony is. medieval times yeah, land overeating right. <laughs> Acropolis or something Vomitoria. <laughs> so you thought that was significant because well, you surely. agree that we're in a we're in a change moment sure I mean you know if, if this can happen if medieval times can be run by a woman yes Ethiopia is ahead of America apparently right. <laughs> you know like it's the leading indicator right <laughs> we will not be far behind possibly. <laughs> Well, I hope it's a moment that lasts. Um, what did you guys think? Natalie Portman came out. Well, first of all, after Oprah sp spoke, they should have gone to a commercial. Producers, please. Then they make these, you know, Opie comes out with Natalie Portman, and they have to announce a category. And she says, you know, here are the all-male nominees for Best Director. Um, I think we have the sound. Let's take a look at that. We are honored, bring, bring, bringing you back to this <laughs> and this, uh, to be here to present the award for Best Director. And here are the all-male nominees. <laughs> For The Shape of Water, Guillermo del Toro. So Guillermo made a little face there, and there were some people who said, hey, that kind of ruined the moment for him because the then he seemed like a bad guy instead of you know the creative genius that he is and the winner of the Golden Globe and other people argued hey you know movements make people uncomfortable that's the way that goes so what did you think well yeah you have to be able to uh, I, as a white male director you have to be able to show a little bit of grace in a situation like that I feel like that's a situation where you're already ready to show grace when they're doing the five close-ups mm -hmm. and then they're gonna do the shot of you when the other guy wins um, you know you have to be ready to, to have a little a little thoughtful, that's true. Me, hashtag me too. Yes. At, least, at, least, <laughs> at least Kanye didn't take his mic, mic and say, I'm going to let you talk. But, it could have yeah. been worse. All right, I just wondered what you guys thought about that. All right, let's try moving and shaking. So students have created a 3D prosthetic foot for a duck who was attacked by some other animal, I don't know what, but Peg's foot was bitten off by a turtle. And these students actually found a leg, I mean, made a leg and repaired this animal and changed its life. What do you think about the future of 3D printing, what all we can make and what its possibilities might be? I have long had a phobia about having my leg bitten off by a turtle. Well, and yeah. now, now there's a solution. <laughs> Thanks for triggering John. It's like his greatest fear. Peg the duck has gone ahead of you to make it safe. <laughs> this is the state of healthcare in America where when a, <laughs> when a turtle bites off our legs, we gotta get on Patreon <laughs> and hope that a bunch of eighth graders will print us a new leg. But it's you guys are techie and I'm just thinking this whole, there's a, there's a dad um, in the area who made an entire Diagon Alley from Harry Potter oh. in his driveway. I took my kids. It, yes, it was amazing. Here's the duck, the duck's foot is good. I'm just thinking this has enormous possibilities. Do either of you play with 3D at all? I think the technology, we, we, want, we want 3D printing to be uh, more advanced than it is. I mean, most th 3D printers are about the size of a duck's foot so. still. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's a, the, they're working on a technology now where prosthetic fingers can actually transmit feeling to your kind of body. Amazing. And so right. you, you, it, they're developing sensitivity within robot hands. So please be sure to pass that on to the mole people for whom you're doing the podcast. Oh, they'll be, they, they a, they'll be oh, 100% they'll robots. Yeah. They're 3D printing slaves and everything. It's great. Okay, so now we're cheating again to Starstruck <laughs> using Star in a different way. You're really cheating a I lot. I know. I don't know why. I, you didn't I, even go to a far away one. You okay. went like two. All right. All right. <laughs> Starstruck. Star oh, oh, so close. No. Just go back so to Starstruck. Are we? Okay, yeah, thank we you. Well, it's fun. So um, SpaceX. Had a had a launch that appears to be totally lost. Um, what do we think about the prospect of private industry space exploration as opposed to the government? We well, you know our our own local Jeff Bezos has his own space right. program. And Mark Kelly, the astronaut who was here to talk about his book, was going from here to talk to Jeff Bezos about that. I've actually been to Blue Origins. Have you? And have toured the facility, yes. but I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to speak about anything I saw. Well, that's a bummer. Well, no, I'll just, I'll, I'll, just I'll reveal everything. <laughs> I mean, he actually here in... Not in, a future <laughs> intelligence officer. Down in Renton, he's building actual spaceships in his own facility there. I mean, it's not just theoretical. He has rockets uh, that he's assembling. Right. And it looks like it'll be a great trip. Big windows, 
comfortable chairs. Passengers will go on Cup this. holders. See, I'm not sure I want this done by somebody that I kind of know. You know, I'm, I'd like some <laughs> distant scientists who are the best of the best making this. You don't want it to be your neighbor, Gary? <laughs> not as hey, much. I, I took down diagonally, <laughs> but good news, I got a Mars mission. I made a rocket, would you like to, to go? go? No, thank you. It does um, show that all these rich people really were Bond villains the whole time, yeah. you know? Like, like all they want to do is put an orbiting satellite up there and then but maybe that's the is. way to go. I don't know. I mean, Elon Musk seems like he knows what he's doing with these kinds of things. Except that, his rockets keep blowing well, up. Well, that's true. Yeah. So what do you think, government or private? This is one of the big questions in America now. Uh, like, uh, is private enterprise, I mean, this is the American question. Right. Is private enterprise going to sa save us or is government intervention going right. to save us? And it's the political divide. And we're in an era where it's presumed that our capitalists are gonna are our benefactors can solve everything and right. will do it for for our benefit. And I'm sure that Elon Musk somewhere in his house has a giant uh, like globe covered with it's like a chocolate fountain or something. <laughs> like, I hope they're so. all they're all evil uh, at their <laughs> at their heart, right? Uh, John is not buying the market will solve everything. I take it. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, I uh, I am also suspicious of you know millionaires, billionaires. They never built us an interstate highway system. You know they they have limited experience with this kind of mega project. They didn't willingly give us the forty hour work week, etc. They weren't I, I, crazy about I it. I feel like Seattle should first have internet as a public utility before we start <laughs> right. before we start building rocket ships we should have like uh, uh, we should have this technology distributed and uh, distributed equitably in our in our cities if Eliminate Jeff could do the that right I mean then, Jeff, we, then we let him into low earth orbit Be right. Bezos first should be you gotta clean to your room well, That's this right. guy's going down to visit him, so can you take care yes. of this for us? You're clearly his crazy that? Bond henchman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you've got a razor-brimmed hat that you throw at his enemies. As a Seattle, uh, as a minor league Seattle rock celebrity, I am beloved by billionaires around the world. <laughs> they, they, they want me there to, they, I kind of hip up to the program. Of, yeah, yeah, to pull the strings. Thank you both very much. I will be listening to this podcast, and I'm so glad you were here to talk with us today. Appreciate it. Thanks, Good to Margaret. see you it's both. Pleasure. You can download and subscribe to John and Ken's omnibus podcast on itunes of course and we'll post a link to their website where you can listen to them as well be on our website where everything else is when we come back sweet and savory ways to make amazing popcorn after this Yay!